This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on environmental science and it's part of Unit 2. We're looking at ecological succession, what this is and how it plays a fundamental role in our environment, in our ecosystems, our soil and nutrient and element cycling and the production and maintenance and development of life on this planet, both flora and fauna. So this is Ecological Succession. This is the Earth Science Classroom. The definition of ecological succession is basically the process of change to an ecosystem. So it's looking at how long this change takes, what happens to make it change, and also why it changes. So why does this ecosystem change over time and succession is to basically promote and then have this series of new adaptations and new changes which would then develop the ecosystem further and become more complex to a point where that environment or ecosystem has reached its max development level called the climax community and it's a point of stabilization where it is developed to a point where it is stable and functioning and basically is the max development for that area based on the limiting factors and also the climate so elevation temperature seasonality and precip and we have two different types of succession. We have primary succession and secondary succession. Both are important and both we'll discuss in this video. In order to fully discuss ecological succession, we have to first talk about disturbances and what a disturbance is. A disturbance is a alteration or a sudden shift in the environment or in the ecosystem. So it can be either natural or human induced or anthropogenic. So example would be a volcanic eruption or an earthquake or forest fire or a catastrophic asteroid impact would be an example of natural disturbances which would disturb the sequence of succession that that exact environment is going through at that time. So this forest or this landscape is completely changed over a very short time through this natural disturbance. Or you might have a human disturbance, like where you have clear cutting and deforestation to make room for farmland or arable farmland or cattle ranches. We might have areas of land demolished and blasted to make room for urbanization, a new highway, a new parking lot, lots of impervious services, pollution, maybe an infestation of insects or disease. So these are examples of disturbances that can affect and kind of put the pause button on a environment going through succession and maybe even push the restart button whereby the whole environment has to restart from the beginning of succession and start again. A forest fire is a great example of a disturbance which can be caused by both human activity and by natural causes. Now these forest fires are unfortunately common in a lot of areas around the world and they do cause a lot of issues for humans that live near these forest fires and they're evacuated and things are burned and it's quite awful. However, for the environment and for the focus in this video, we're looking at the stages of redevelopment, recovery, and succession of that particular environment and how the forest fire provides an opportunity for this environment to restart, to grow again and develop again through serial stages where it's all burnt and then slowly but surely back comes life. The ingredients, the ability for life to regrow through different stages, which is succession, back to its original state of stability in that climax community. Our first type to look at is primary succession. Now this is the very beginning, the starting point for succession, and this occurs on a landscape or an area or environment that does not have any pre-existing vegetation, flora, or fauna present. So it's gonna start with bare rock. So just rock, maybe it's sedimentary, maybe it is igneous, which is more common because of volcanic eruptions, will produce igneous rock, maybe metamorphic rock with maybe tectonic uplift, 
and you have this bare rock that is going to bring about the restarting or emergence of succession with certain species of plants, algae and fungi migrating and being the first organic species to inhabit this bare rock and kickstart succession in order to bring about development of this newly formed ecosystem. So primary succession is in regards to a disturbance that will create bare rock and completely restart and eradicate any prior environment that would have existed. For example, a large flood or a large landslide or an asteroid impact, like the KT extinction event, around that crater would have been completely bare rock and, well, besides the Gulf Mexico, but you'd have a fresh start with this brand new rock canvas from which the new ecosystem will begin to grow and develop. So this bare rock is a result of a disturbance. And then what you have is you have these pioneer species that are the first ones to move in and migrate in, usually lichens and fungi, grasses and algae, and they would secrete this kind of weak acid and they would start to break down the rock chemically and mechanically, weather the rock into smaller and smaller pieces and more would come in and it would start to add that organic material with the inorganic rock material and minerals and you start to form the basis of soil, very thin soil, mostly the O and A horizon and then eventually the B, C and the larger mass horizons would form over a course of time. And then you have the intermediate species, you have the grasses, the shrubs, flowering plants, small plants, small trees perhaps, and that middle stage of development where you have some thickness of soil, the nutrients cycling, you have photosynthesis, you have the water flowing through, percolating overland flow, and you have streams and rivers nearby, and you have this flow of nutrients, and you have this ecosystem starting to develop. And then finally, after about 150 years, give or take on average, you might have this environment reach its climax community, which is a point of stability, it's a point of high levels of biodiversity, a point of high and thick and quality soil based on the nutrients, based on the climate, based on the water, could be a clay soil, could be silt, sand, could be more loamy sand. You have this climax community of this fully developed forest environment, again, based on the location, based on latitude, seasonality, elevation, precip and temperature, but you have the result of a sequence of events that have led this environment from bare rock to a flourishing environment like a forest. Here you have an example of a climax community, of a forest environment which has gone through different stages and seers of ecological succession over a course of time from basic algae and lichens and weeds and plants and grasses to this vibrant high level of biodiversity and soil thickness and nutrients climax community. The next type of succession is secondary. So primary is where you have bare rock as your starting point and you have succession starting from that bare rock and taking longer to reach the climax because it starts from bare rock and that clean and fresh kind of restart. However, secondary is a little different. You might have a disturbance like a forest fire or you might have flooding but not too much, where there is an amount of pre-existing or remaining organic material or soil which will form the basis for that starting point of succession where, where primary is bare rock, secondary is a pre-existing layer of material which will kickstart succession and allow the different seers and the progression from the pioneer species like grasses through to the climax community to a regrowth, a re-establishment, a recovery of that environment in a much faster time compared to primary succession, which takes a lot longer. So secondary succession is faster generally than primary, and it's the act of recovery and regrowth of environment from pre-existing levels of soil or organic material that's left behind after a disturbance has come through that environment. Now, the most classic 
disturbance is a forest fire where a lot of vegetation and the grasses and the soil and the trees are burnt. However, some tree species actually like this because they release their seeds at a certain temperature during the fire. So without that fire, these seeds would not be released and germinate and form new seedlings in the ground. So sometimes these disturbances are part of nature's organization to re-kickstart an environment for regrowth. So you have this pre-existing soil material or some organic material or some vegetation left over from disturbance and you have then the pioneer species move in which is the grasses, even more fungi and bacteria and plants. Then you get the quicker establishment of those intermediate species that are going to take over and migrate in and use that base of nutrients and chemicals to flourish with shrubs and plants and small trees and then finally again the climate community the stable the high biodiversity and accommodating soil to support this amount of biodiversity and the ecosystem and it will come stable until the next disturbance comes through and the whole system and the whole progression and sequence would restart again this is a graph just showing the comparison between primary and secondary succession and what happens with each seer or serial component within the larger system of succession from start to finish from this disturbance that creates either bare rock or it creates a layer of pre-existing soil or organic material vegetation and then it's going to have those pioneer species move in and migrate and they're going to settle in and develop the environment, develop the soil and kickstart the nutrients and the element cycling and the water. And then it's going to be replaced once that environment is suitable to support the larger, more complex life. It will be then replaced by the intermediate species, which will then utilize the environment, keep growing and redeveloping the environment in order to then allow the climax community the stable large amount of biodiversity to be established in that environment and then you have obviously the development of the soil in terms of the thickness in terms of the o and the a horizon and you have that progression through the system through the different seers or sections or parts of succession where you're being replaced by a more complex and suitable flora and fauna in that environment to continue the development on the way up to the climax community. There are many great examples of ecological succession. However, Mount St. Helens and its eruption in 1980 is a fantastic kind of modern day example that we can all look at and analyze as a case study for both primary and secondary succession. Now, parts of the eruption, the lateral blast, the pyroclastic flow that occurred on one side of the volcano created large expanse of bare rock, kind of destroyed the soil and removed any vegetation in that area and basically laid down layers of pumice and ash and basically created this bare rock environment, which then regrew through primary succession. And then other parts of the area around the mountain was soil and vegetation was present still in small amounts. And that was a great example of secondary succession, succession and how the volcano is flourishing again with different environments. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.